Thanks, Steve. And, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you being here. So, you know, just uh, looking back real quickly, uh, as I said, Saturday, really happy to get the win. It's it's really easy, and uh, we certainly got stressed and uh, got put in some pressure situations uh, by Colorado State. So. Just, you know, overall pleased with the uh, response of our team, especially in the second half. Thought they did some good things and, and um, you know, were able to make it, make it a successful game and uh, some good complimentary football, especially in that third quarter. So that was, it was good to see. And, and uh, like every week, you know, you go through the tape and that always shows some things. There's an awful lot of details that we need to keep working on. I don't know anything specific other than uh, it's just a cumulative effect. And that's really, you know, what the slight edge concept's all about. It's just trying to build and, uh, see if you can't, you know, at some point uh, get things to go the way you want them to go. So, um, anyway, overall good weekend. And then uh, to one side note, just happy for Jack Campbell. He played an excellent game. Good to see him get recognized by the Big Ten. Uh, certainly worthy of that. And, uh, you know, he's playing at a real high level, so happy about that. Uh, as we transition now for the Maryland game, our captains still got uh, Tyler Linderbaum. Uh, Matt Hankins, Jack Kerner, and then Jack Campbell will be the fourth captain. So he'll uh, those four guys will go out for the toss, and, and uh, you know certainly tough challenge on a lot of levels. You know, first of all, it's a short week. We're playing a night game, and uh, being on the road and you know playing a Big Ten opponent, and that that's the biggest component right here right now is just uh, the fact that we're playing a good Big Ten football team. Uh, whether no matter where it is, but certainly uh, with the other conditions prescribed, makes it a Big challenge for us right now. Uh, Coach Loxley's uh, been there now, you know, third year in the program, and they've they've uh, got a good staff. They've clearly you know recruited with a vision, uh, recruited a lot of good athletes. They've got good size, good speed, and their schemes are uh, you know really I think probably what they're looking for and what they want. Uh, I think 37 plus points a game right now, giving up 14. So clearly they're in good shape there and doing a good job on special teams. So um, you know as we look at it, you know it's going to be a big challenge, and I think you know. First and foremost, you start the quarterback. He's a really a good football player. And, you know, if you think about it a little bit, uh, I remember, I don't know where I was, they played a Friday night game. I think his first game uh, to open the season a year ago, and it wasn't a good outing for them or, or the quarterback necessarily. And just look over the last uh, year and a half, how that thing has just changed. And uh, he's playing at a real high level right now, and uh, as is their team. So, you know, a tough start to the season a year ago. and. Uh, the transformation they've gone through is really, really impressive. So, you know, again, short week for us. Uh, we started uh, cranking pretty hard on Sunday, I'm sure, just like they did. And uh, things get squeezed down or off day will be on Saturday. So we're trying to get a lot done right now and uh, before we have to travel on Thursday and then wait around for the game. So all that being said, you know, we know we have a big challenge and uh, hopefully do a good job. And then last but not least, our uh, kid captain is a nine-year-old from Des Moines, uh, Braylon. Uh, Chris Singer will be our, our kid captain, so our best to her, certainly, and throw it out for questions. What is the biggest challenge with the condensed week? Uh, obviously, some experience with Nebraska, but yep. that's a no class situation. Yeah, you just, you know, you try to steal notes from uh, from that. And uh, the biggest biggest thing is, yeah, you, you still have the same amount of work you normally would do, just less, less time to get there. Um, you know, it's not quite as bad as playing on a Sunday in the NFL turnaround, playing Thursday, but there are a lot of – Parallels, I think you have to really try to figure out real quickly what it is you want to try to do and make sure your plan's fairly concise because uh, the biggest thing, it's like any any week, you know, you got to make sure you can get the information across to your players where they have a chance to execute it. So um, and then the other, other thing is, you know, you want to get as much work as you can get done, but you don't want to use up the same amount of energy you would in a game week because there's not that recovery time from Wednesday on what we typically enjoy. When you look at the running game right now, I mean, it seems like there's either <laughs> they're overwhelmed with numbers or there's just sometimes one person is not making yep. their block. Is that just due to inexperience right now? And in what ways can that can they grow and, yeah. and become a better? Uh, you know, it's offense in general. Typically, it's it's usually a, a group thing. But you know, I'm just sitting there right right away. One thing I I think of is uh, one of the disappointing plays. Uh, there were several on Saturday, but. Um, looked like we had a little momentum, and then we, we uh, tried to run the around, and the ball ends up going backwards, I think 15 yards or whatever it was. So we lose yards off our run total. And But the bigger issue there is just like that's a play we've executed without issue in practice, and we didn't do it on Saturday, and that's the only day that counts. So just a good illustration. I think part of that's concentration. Uh, that takes into your run, run totals. 
bigger bigger issue there is it kills momentum. You know, you had we had a little momentum at that point, just had a big play. Now we go back, whatever however many yards it was, kind of takes ear out of the balloon a little bit. And luckily, Caleb came through with a good good field goal attempt at that point. But uh, you know, those are the bigger concerns. I think you know the little you know if you run run it up in there for one yard or something like that, that doesn't kill you. But those kind of plays really kill drives and. Um, that's it's just all part of execution, and you know a lot of it's concentration. A lot of it's just you know a little bit more experience and reaction to whatever situation might present itself. What about um, is Kyler Shot in line for some more reps? How about Justin Britt? Will that help reinforce things this week? Yeah, what Justin's been able to practice. I'll start with him, so that's encouraging and looks fine. And uh, yeah, I think Kyler's gaining ground. So with every, every week, you know, we expect to see him play more and more. And, uh, that that will help us. There are two guys who are a little bit older, certainly, but uh, Kyler especially is experienced. Is that something you see helping the run game? I mean, you got a lot of young guys out there still. And yeah, yeah, it, it should help us, but it's not the total answer. Yeah, we, we just have to keep getting better. That's the biggest thing. Just keep working at it. And um, as I said Saturday, I think I said, you know, it's a little bit of, I think we got to provide better uh, direction, maybe a little better scheme, and then uh, we got to got to execute better. So it's a combination of both things, try to figure out what we can do well. Obviously, you guys were trailing in the second half for the first time last week. And I'm sure, you'd rather just lead every game by double digits the whole time. But Tyler Linderbaum said he thinks it was good for those guys to, to face that adversity. And you know, after you look back at the tape, he felt good about the way you guys responded. Do you think it was it was good to have that adversity, particularly at the end of non-conference play? Yeah, there's there's no downside to it as long as it comes out the right way, which it did. You know, it's a happy ending. Uh, but that's part of football. I mean, it, it's really surprising to go four games without that, or you know, go to your fourth game before that happens. Um, and that, that's, we're going to go through more of it this year. You know, you play a schedule, uh, anybody that's in conference football, you move into conference football, that's part of the deal. So, yeah, we're going to have tough, tough situations. We'll have them on, on Friday, I'm sure of that. Uh, it's going to be a tough environment. And, uh, you know, who knows how a game's going to go. You never know that going into it. So it's good training. And I think the biggest thing is we stayed composed and the guys just kept playing and, uh, you know, made some big plays defensively, special teams, and then we're able to, you know, do what we should do offensively once we got those opportunities. When you look again, kind of offensively, the, you know, you mentioned the, the reverse that went backwards, and there was probably at least 10 yards he could have run <coughs> positively yeah. had he gotten the ball. And then the week before where you have a receiver fall down after catching a tun tunnel screen, you had a, a catch that whatever wasn't really a catch. Yeah. You have all these little plays that just is, – is, is it frustrating or does it show everybody, look, we're not that far away that things can really move if you – Probably you know. some of both, really. It is frustrating because uh, those are the little things that keep you from really getting into a rhythm and uh, gaining confidence. You know, and it's a little – sometimes uh, there are a couple of run plays I'm thinking of in particular. Um, it's like 47 and 52 on our sheet uh, where we're this close just – you know, popping one up the middle, but close doesn't count as we know. But it's just it's so there are little things in there that if we're just a little better on an angle or you know a little bit more delay here as you're coming through on a block that type of thing, all of a sudden now the backs you know up into the secondary and you know a guy like Tower might be able to do something with that. So uh, th those are the little things I kind of think all of us kind of take with us and we try to get you know make those illustrations on Sunday to our players, and then, then the trick is to go out there and execute those things a little bit better as you move forward. And that's the difference between winning and losing a lot of times. It really is. And I just pointed out that one play, because that, that was a simple execution that we've done. It wasn't anything above and beyond. And you know, you got to make the routine stuff. You got to do the makeables. You can do those well, and you got to do them consistently. It starts there. Spencer obviously had a lot more deep throws. Do you see that happening in Maryland, Penn State, kind of going forward in Big Ten play? Yeah, no, it's just part part of what you do, hopefully. And uh, you know, typically the percentage just go down the th you know the further you throw it down the field. But that that you know it was good football, and uh, you know we had had a couple guys beat deep, so good that we could execute those and. Um, to that point, uh, last week was a better week for us completing deep balls in practice, whereas, you know, a couple of weeks prior to that, um, you know, I wasn't so sure how many of those we were making. In fact, I'm pretty sure how many we weren't making. And that, that's a concern because if you're not doing it in practice, it's not going to happen in the game. You know, you've got you to hit it in rhythm out there in the field, the practice field first. Is there a point where you want to settle on best five for the offensive line? And have you reached that point? No, I mean, we had certainly haven't done that. And, uh, if, you know, if that happens, great. And if it doesn't happen, that's okay, too. We'll play it however it, however it plays out. Um, you know, I, I would assume once Kyler gets himself in, you know, game shape, uh, you know, he'll be playing more. 
because uh, you know we've already seen him play and we know he can play pretty well. But but everybody else is doing some good things too. So it's just you know just kind of how it pans out. And we you know I'm not smart enough to know where we're going to be here in three weeks. But uh, I think it's going to be a pretty dynamic process for a while, and we'll take it week by week and then see where we're at during the bye week. You've always tried to almost accelerate a good young offensive lineman in there as a rotational guy. I think back mm -hmm. to Austin Blythe or Brandon Sheriff and a few others at guard and then kind of move <coughs> around afterwards. Is that kind of the pace that you've got right now for Connor Colby as a true freshman being able to do anything? Yeah, I mean, he's definitely in the mix and uh, mainly because he's starting in the spring. He didn't look like he was overwhelmed. Uh, not that he knew what he's doing 100% and still doesn't, but uh, looked like he, you know, he belonged in the pack, if you will. And then he's he's done a lot of good things. So, and he's he's also struggled some out there, which is totally predictable in practice and then also in the game field. Uh, and he had a couple of plays the other day that, you know, I, I thought he was capable of making, but it just happened a little faster than maybe he thought. But that's part of you know, inexperience and youth. And you know, the same same thing as the last discussion. We'll just kind of see how it all plays out. But I I think he's definitely you know in that group of six, seven, eight guys, and see how it all pans out. Did you ever, I, I assume he'll keep getting better too because he is young. I should have done my homework, but did you ever go to Maryland when you're? I know you went in 14, but like when you're at Maine or Pitt or anything like that. Or is no, that, this is pretty kind of a unique thing. We for played you. Maryland uh, at Pitt, and the Tice, one of the Tices was a quarterback, big tall guy. I, th I can't remember if they were both on the team. I remember they're from Long Island, and uh, I think quarterback tight end. Uh, but anyway, uh, they had a good team. Jerry Claymore was the head coach. Maine, we uh, went to Rutgers, not not Maryland, and we went to Hawaii. But uh, no, I think I've only been there once. I think last 14 was the only time. I guess I'm just trying to get a sense. Does this feel like a, a it, weird type of game for you? It's, it's still different, yeah. It, it definitely feels, you know, they're not new to the Big Ten per se, but they're new to us because we've only been there once. And that's, it is different. It really is different, just like traveling to uh, Rutgers was different. So that'll take a while. And I don't know when our next trip out there is, so it may take a long while. <laughs> We'll see. Right now, we're worried about three days from now, or four days, whatever it is. About that, that game in 14, the program is in a different place then than it is now. Is there any value in, in going back to that game, getting some takeaways from it, and applying it to this week? Interestingly enough, a couple of coaches were there during that time, but I, that's, so much has changed since then. You know, I think uh, philosophically and uh, what they're doing, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm correct in saying Coach Stewart was the defensive coordinator then, too, but totally different scheme. So, I mean, a lot of, lots happened to him in his life and our lives. Uh, I think our program, you know, we, we, I think, you know, I don't want to say turning point is 15, but I think, I think, you know, things are a little bit different philosophically. So, yeah, I mean, there's really no use uh, going back to that thing. Uh, Tori Taylor said that, um, well, his punting his winning shirt benefits counts the kicks, which is obviously a cause that's close to your heart with the stillbirth. And he said that's really dedication to you and his relationship that he's formed with you. And I was wondering how, like, uh, when you heard that he was going to sell these shirts for that cause, what that meant to you. Yeah, first of all, Tori's one of the, you know, as you guys have experienced, he's one of the neatest uh, people to come through the program. Um, it's, it's, he's just so different because he is, not naive is not the right word, but it's such a fresh approach um, to everything because – he is brand new to everything about college football, so that, that's been pretty pretty fun to watch that. Um, so, yeah, and then, as you might imagine, I mean, I, I didn't find out about it because it was on social media, right? So, I mean, somebody showed it to me. Uh, somebody I'm married to showed me, uh, you know, what he was doing. So that, that's pretty cool. And, um, yeah, I mean, Mary, I remember the first time Mary met with the folks from Count From Kicks. Uh, um, I mean, you know, she met with them. Hey, I'll only be gone for an hour. I was in Des Moines, and you know, I was at my daughter's house. And, uh, uh, yeah, she got back like four hours later, typically. That's, that's, our, that's how we, you know, do things. And, but I got to watch uh, the Celtics. That's actually the first pro basketball game I watched in quite a while. And uh, I was really, you know, that was good. So we had a good day. But uh, they're great people, and they've done really great work. And it's, it's really uh, work that, you know, uh, should be touted. I mean, it's, it's not just in Iowa. It's a national uh, initiative and really, really cool. So for Tori to do that, you know, that's really you know, a very nice gesture on his part. And just, it's, it's a shame he doesn't get to benefit from in, you know, the NIL stuff, but uh, you know, that's the way he's wired. He's really an exceptional young person. Looking at Spencer, 12 starts in now. We saw in the last game him really throwing the ball confidently down the field. What has it been like, or how would you assess 
his ability to gain trust over the coaches over the last few years, that it culminates in y'all allowing him to, to throw the ball down the field and to open up the playbook a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have felt really good about him and continue to feel really good about him. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no issue there. And, uh, you know, we've had deep throws in our playbook. It just, you know, Saturday they were there. And uh, it's great to see him, you know, be aggressive with the ball and do that. And, um, you know, there's only one play that really stands out. And I think all of us wish we had back. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of several things, not a lot, several things wrong with that play. But one was to just throw the ball where nobody can get it and would have been a better ending there. But that's part of the process. And he'll, he'll be learning as long as he's playing, just like all of us are. You know, we're all learning too. So, uh, but we're great. You know, very uh, thrilled he's our quarterback. He's doing a good job, and Alex is doing a nice job, too, in the backup role. When you, uh, when you first started running cash uh, as the primary defense, that was against Minnesota a couple years ago, and they had two receivers, Tyler Johnson and Rashad Bateman, who are both in the league now. Really um, <clears throat> these two guys are somewhat like that, um, I guess, in Jarrett and uh, in Demas. How instrumental is that defense going to be, and what kind of – what kind of strides have you made, like over three years, in in orchestrating that defense against good receivers? Like this? Yeah, it's just it's it's really the way the world's going right now in college football. And uh, you know, last week was an exception to the rule, so Justin got a lot of work out there. And uh, typically, it's Wisconsin one game a year in our you know that we can we know is on our schedule every year that we're we're same thing, same thing, but. Pretty much everybody's kind of transitioned now where it's three or four wides out there. So it just kind of makes it a little better uh, matchup for us. Not that we don't use our, our normal 40 defense, too. Um, and, you know, Dane's really allowed us to do a good job with it. He's been really good in that position. So, we you know, we have confidence with him. And uh, as we look at this week's opponent, that's what we're looking at. You know, they're a team that likes to throw the football. they got a quarterback who throws it well. And, Really good receivers, a whole whole group of guys. You know, they all got single digits. They're all uh, they got good size. You know, they have good size besides good athleticism. So it's a tough matchup for all of us in the back end. To that, to Scott's question, I mean, mm -hmm. when you go four two five, it usually pulls Justin off the field. But it seems like he's playing so well, you wouldn't want that to happen. So how, yeah, does he, how do you deal with that? that that's the tug, you know, and that that goes back to that two thousand discussion with Norm. Uh, I was convinced uh, we would go nickel. And, you know, the next morning he just said, you know, didn't want to take LeVar off the field. And in his mind, it was a matter of personnel. How, how do you justify taking a guy off the field and, and uh, playing another? So that, that's one of the dilemmas in football that you go through uh, sometimes. And uh, do you go scheme or do you go personnel? And uh, there's some give or take there. And, and uh, in this case, uh, you know, um, you know, we just feel like, you know, Justin's really moved on, you know, from a year ago. He's really elevated. So it's a little tougher discussion that way. And he, he does a good job in pass coverage, too. So, you know, but the other good news is he can he can play those inside positions. Um, you know, probably we'd be more apt to put him where Seth plays and then move Seth to Jack's spot if, if we're going to take Jack out. But it's hard to take all three of those guys off. They're really playing well right now. And that's, well, that's a good thing for us. A couple of weeks ago, you were talking about, you know the game is coming where you're going to have to score 40 or more points yep. to win. Given the team's offensive stats nationally, you know, through the yep. first four games, if that game were to be this Friday night, how confident are you your offense can do that? <laughs> well, first of all, yeah, we never know when it's going to come. Uh, and I think you guys know me well enough. I hope it never comes because I hate those games. Uh, but, but they're, you know, it's part of football too. And, uh, you know, we'll just we'll just play it by ear. But yeah, we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. I actually was having that thought today. I, I don't know what made me, you know, my mind was wandering on the field. Uh, but you know, we we've we've done some things in practice at times where it's looked pretty good against our defense. Maybe it was during the two minute drill we did this morning. Um, so you know, you, you do what you got to do, and that that's part of football. You know, we don't want to play that way all the time, certainly. But if we have to, we'll we'll do our best. And I, Got confidence in our guys. I think you know. I think we're certainly capable. That's just not going to be our approach. You know, coming out of the shoot, that's for sure. Campbell, he was just named <laughs> National Player of the Week um, this week. And uh, how difficult of a how choice? Did you know that? What time is it? Is it two o'clock? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> guys, put the phones away. All right. That's, 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 <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I intentionally didn't say anything because the memo I got said two o'clock. So I'm trying to be obedient and mindful and all that stuff. Don't want to get in trouble. I voted for him too. Thank you. I appreciate that. I would have if I had a vote. Yeah. 
I love those lines. What does he do so well at middle linebacker? Where that's the type of frame usually you're lining him up on the edge, but he's able to play everywhere. So For up to me, he'd be a defensive end or a center probably. So uh, that's that's you know I got next on both those uh, vetoed badly. Uh, he, you know, he's just a good football player, and he is an unusual. He's got unusual size for a linebacker, um, but you know he just he just is uh, like like most guys, good players at most positions. Like they just have a mindset that allows them to really go, and he's he does things just at one tempo basically all the time, and you know at least he can't fall out in football. That's one good thing. So uh, you know some of the issues he had in basketball don't don't carry over to our sport. But he's just he's a he's really focused. He's very coachable, and boy, he goes hard. And he's got he's got good, you know, some of that's God given. But he's worked really hard to develop what he has, and that's it's just a really it's a credit to him. And he'll keep getting better because he's got a great attitude. You alluded to the basketball practice you and Reese went to after Saturday's yeah. game uh, of Campbell's. No. Yeah. Uh, in specific, what are your memories of that? Because that was. From what I understand, quite the, the memorable practice. Yeah. Well, to, to the point of Leah's article, I don't pretend to be an expert in basketball or any other sport. Uh, baseball, I know a little bit about, but you know, not compared to like you know what these guys talk. I hear people talk now about baseball. I'm like, Whoa. Uh, so, but I just you just a, you can get a feel uh, when you're in a practice uh, if a team's into it. Uh, I mean, the coaches were highly organized. It really just flowed. It, you know, it was really. Just impressive that way. There wasn't any wasted time. They're all doing things, and they were doing things that you know most of it pertained to fundamentals. So that that part was impressive for me. And uh, you know, it's like a, a I don't know if escapes uh, the right word, but it's it's fun to to just go watch people, other people work, and watch them do things that uh, kind of pertain to what we do. So enjoyed that, and that was a great group of guys on the team too. That was evident, and uh, you know, panned out to be true. So that was a year that I think they won their state championship. But you could just feel it on the on the in the gym. There was a real good vibe in there, and it was just a real positive vibe. But a lot of good work was going on. He actually was quite a good basketball player. I thought so. I mean, he he improved a lot in basketball because he was a foul waiting to happen early. You know, I mean, he was, but he became pretty good. I thought. Going back to, to Spencer and the play that you referenced earlier where he, he should have threw the ball away, is that yeah. the, the next progression in his game in your mind, not forcing the ball, or is it maybe um, another aspect? Yeah, it's, it's just, you know, um, I'm not sure people always appreciate how hard a job it is to be the quarterback because it's – and it's, it's interesting in this game, you have two quarterbacks that have one interception on their resumes right now, four games into it, and that, that's impressive because um, they both have so much – You just there's so many decisions you have to make. And you want to do well, and you want your team to move. And but yeah, sometimes the best thing to do is throw it away, or you know, sometimes you have to eat the ball. That that's regrettable. You don't want to do that. But uh, so there's, those are hard things. They're just really hard things to get across. And um, you know, so it's 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 easy to. I think I may have mentioned this. I think a week ago, Tuesday or two Tuesdays ago, I was driving home and listening to uh, Brett Favre and Sean Payton talking about it. And uh, you know, but just throw, throw it away. And Peyton made the comment that, like, it's it's easier said than done. It's not always that easy. And I, I don't know anything about quarterbacks, but I figure those two guys both know a lot more than I know. And to hear them say that, you know, just kind of reinforces, like, uh, people don't, I don't always appreciate how hard it is to be a quarterback. Uh, you know, if, if you got a system, and we, you know, we got a system where our guy makes a lot of decisions, uh, same thing with the quarterback we're facing this week. He's, he's the same kind of guy. Speaking of Tagovailoa, how much of an added challenge is that when he can, when he wants to make plays with his feet too? It's a huge challenge, and you know, um, I think we've faced him. I think before I talk here, two out of four, no, three out of four weeks. All right, I think I'm correct. Three out of four weeks this this year, we've dealt with that um, brain farting on who the other. But anyway, but I know the last couple of weeks, and you know. Um, no, like four for four. Although we, the first game, you know, the guy was coming off an injury, weren't quite as worried. The other guys have all been, you know, guys that were effective pulling the ball down and going. Um, this guy, will, he'll get outside the pocket. You know, so if we if we let him outside, that's a little dangerous, and he'll do that uh, with ease. You know, just it's amazing how easy he gets out there, and then all of a sudden, but he's looking like a good quarterback. He's looking down the field when he gets out there. He'll he will run it, but he's trying to make a play, and that that's really scary. So. Now they force you to stay back in coverage uh, when he's broken contain. 
and that that's a, that's a dilemma for any defensive player. Is their offense similar then, maybe to in Indiana, or totally different than anything you've seen so far? Yes, yeah, kind of similar, but uh, you know it's different. They're I don't know. I mean, they you know they run the ball, uh, but you know he he is the center of it, and they, they've got a big physical uh, offensive line. Um, you know they got a, a stronger maybe group of receivers. The receiver from Indiana is as good as you're going to see, but you know I mean so it's a different challenge every time you go. These they've got really good size on their whole quarterback's probably the smallest guy. Herb Ellis on the offense is pretty good, pretty big guys, big athletic guys. Maryland uh, clearly is better. Yep. Uh, Rutgers is better. Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan have all kind of bounced back so far. Has the tide <coughs> risen in this conference? Uh, and, and if so, is it just rising in the East? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know. I can't say yet. And it's kind of like everything in college football. I, I just four games into it, we know what we know and four games into it. There, there's so much more that's going to unfold here, especially in the next month. So, yeah, I mean, to me, it's always been competitive. You know, we'll, we'll know more about who's what and what's, you know, what's what when I get into November. But uh, right now, everything looks tough to me. I mean, it's just kind of how I look at it. And certainly this week, that's what it looks like. From a defensive perspective uh, and mindset, is there a, different, uh, a difference in scheme and adjustments when you see, when you go to a game and everyone's flying around, there are two pick sixes versus a game like last Saturday where the two teams combined or 80 rushes for like two and a half yards per carry, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, I mean, games have different feels. There's no question about that. And, uh, you know, you, you try to, you know, steer a game towards the way you want it to feel, but that, it doesn't always work that way. So, you know, you play it as it, as it pans out. And again, that's, that's something, um, you know, it's really hard to gauge going in. You, you know, you think you know and all that kind of stuff, but you just never know what's going to happen or how it's going to go. And that's, to me, why well, you have to have flexibility in your system to be able to play it out, however it may, uh, you know, may unfold, because you just never know, and you never know what's going to happen in a game either. Sometimes things happen that are inexplicable, but you still got to deal with it. So you know, you got to push forward and try to find a way to adjust. Offensively, I was still last in the Big Ten in total offense, but of course, like defense has kind of been the key to success these past four games. How long do you think you can write out that strategy and? You're hoping to, I guess, increase that production on offense, and how, how are you going to go about that? Yeah, I mean, as you might imagine, our team goal is not to be last in the league uh, offensively, that's for sure. Uh, to be to be 4-0 right now is as good as you can do, so happy about that. And we're doing a lot of really good things. And, um, you yeah, know, it's just I mean, we're, we're, there are things on defense, too, we can get better. You know, I mentioned third down, I think, uh, the other day, or at least I'd, I'd mention it right now. So there are things that we can do better there, and it's every week you're just looking at what can we do to move forward, and uh, you know we'll worry about the stats and all that stuff when the season's over. Right now, it's just what, what do we have to do to win this week, and but but with a bigger eye on improvement too, and there, that's where your eyes always on. That's really the, the race we're all running. You know, is how how good can we become in any certain segment or area, and you know try to analyze you know what's not working, what can we do to make it better, and just kind of take it week by week. What's regaining like as a player and person. Well, I think as a player, he's probably really underrated. Uh, it just you know, he's a he's a really good football player. I don't know if clutch is the right word, but he's a really dependable. Um, you know, and just I think has a a knack that way. And it stems from he's a competitive person, really. Uh, you know, very very competitive. And what I didn't know is he uh, his dad played baseball for uh, UConn. I did know that. I didn't know he played for my my freshman football coach Andy Baylock. You know, a little connection there, but. Uh, so there might be a little bit of a genetic, uh, you know, competitiveness because I know Andy's very effusive about his dad as a, as a player. He just really nothing but great things. And Nico's a he's all football player. Flight different than going to Ames, so a different kind of road trip. But what did you learn from your team with, with what happened with Iowa State that you can maybe take into Maryland and, and beyond? Yeah. One, one interesting to your point, we have two plane trips this year, um, and you know, first seven games part of our schedule. We're out of the state once, so that's something I did notice. Uh, so this is a little bit unique there, but uh, that's what I told our players this morning. You know, we expect a very hostile environment. Sounds like it's going to be a sellout, a blackout. You know, wh who knows what kind of uh, stuff they'll have going there. And but that that's conference play, yeah, and I can't imagine you know uh, the environment we were in a couple of weeks goes as tough as it's going to get. So expect this to be the same way. And you know the real the trick is to somehow 
you know, block that out and concentrate on the task. So that that's what we have to do. And you know, it's not like we're taking a bus or a stagecoach. I mean, at Maine, that, that's different. Okay, we talked, you know, bus under Rutgers, that, that's an away trip. Okay, flying to Hawaii with uh, however many stops, we made about four stops to get there, that's an away trip. So it's not like this is, you know, stressful to fly, you know, whatever it is, an R45. And, you know, that, I mean, shame on us if we complain about that. Does playing at Maryland do anything for you in terms of recruiting? Uh, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't hurt, I guess, but, you know, we don't make a living necessarily on the East Coast, so, um, you know, yeah, I don't, that's not in our thoughts right now. Yep. Obviously, this isn't your first Friday game. Are you starting to like these, or do you prefer the Saturday? I'm, I'm okay, uh, and this, is, this makes the October deadline, so I'll say I'm okay with October on. Uh, I wouldn't like it in September. Certainly wouldn't like it early season. Uh, unless it was the first game, then you have, you know, you just start camp a day earlier. So there, there's some disadvantages to it, obviously. But I, I think we're far enough into it where, but it's going to be a test. You know, how can we handle this week? You know, what's our maturity level that way? You talked about these short weeks three times last year because after you guys had two, two Friday games when there was the – Yeah, with Betsy Ross game. Day, too, on uh, okay. Michigan State. Took Tuesday off. I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> I, I, guess that's the I walked out of the room, I'm thinking, these guys have no idea who Betsy Ross is. <laughs> They Googled it. Uh, Ryan Grisande Googled it. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, you won all three. <laughs> what? You got to go. I really couldn't. Okay. <laughs> well, history lesson for everybody. Um, you, you won all three of those games last year. Um, we talked about this short week preps. Those guys feel like they have confidence in how these weeks work. Do you feel like there's something that you guys have figured out on that subject? or? Is there something you do better than people, or was it just you just happen to be better on those three, three games and had nothing to do with the short week? Yeah, I, I, we played pretty well, I think, and you know, typically we do. But it, again, it gets back to how well the team can handle the adjustments, and that's you know, we're all creatures of habit, especially in sports. We love our routines, uh, and I'm you know, coming out of the pandemic, it's been one of the great things to get back in a routine. But uh, the facts are, you know, this is it shakes things up a little bit, and it's just you know, you have to be adaptable too, especially in sports. So, uh, but. You know, it's easy for me to say, okay, this is what we've done, you know, so we'll just do this again. The players have to make that adjustment and they've got to handle it well. And they, they got to realize, you know, we're, we can't work as hard physically. It's, it's not realistic and can't put maybe as much time in because uh, you lose a calendar day. So, you know, how, how do you budget that into your, all the other stuff that you got? And our players have a lot on their, like all college football players, they got a lot on their plates. So, you know, it's a challenge for them to, to prioritize it, figure out how to make it work, and then, then pull it off and realize, you know, we'll get, catch our breath on Saturday now this week instead of a, a normal off day. Subject to physicality, too. We, we talked to Jack Campbell earlier, and I mean, he's got a cut up here in his face, and his sheen has dry blood all over it. He, he looks a little bit like he's just been in a street fight. And I asked him if there's anybody, you know, he was in 18 car accidents on Saturday. And, is there anybody who's, who's watching, paying attention to that? How do you handle, I mean, especially when a guy is particularly physical like that on a short week, do you have to look out extra for guys like that? Because he said, he's like, I'm, I'm not going to come to them and tell them that I'm back. Yeah, I mean, you, you, some players you have to pull back or pull out of practice sometimes, and that's, those are good players who like to recruit those guys. Because uh, they help set tempo in practice, that's really, but yeah, you, you, that's our job as adults is to figure out you know, how much, how little. And I think, you know, if, if uh, experience teaches you anything, you know, if, if you're ever in doubt, do less. That's, that's kind of the moral of the story. And that's true pretty much year round, I think, right now. And that's certainly in an off week, you know, we're, we're not going to make a difference by, you know, going, going live contact. I mean, that's, that's not going to make the difference Friday. You know, shame on us if we, if we think that is. Yep. Well, most of your offensive linemen are pretty versatile, can play multiple spots. But when uh, in the spring, Cody Ince was slated for outside, but then he couldn't practice, yeah. so you kind of left him inside. Um, has there been any more discussion about um, shifting him around, or is he pretty much uh, stuck at, at left guard this year anyway? Yeah, if we can just keep him a left guard, I'd be thrilled. You know, we, we just at some point we got to get things solidified and figure out what the equation is and. Um, it's twofold. I think we have enough guys at tackle. I didn't know what that would look like. None of us knew what that looked like uh, throughout spring practice. I think now we're far enough along where we feel like, yeah, he can stay on the inside. And uh, you know, he's also prior at third center as well. So uh, that, that's enough for him to focus on. But if, you know, if, if uh, you know, get a hole in the wall or something like that, you got you to fix it. So hopefully we don't get to that point. But I, I think we're 
think we've pretty much got boundaries for every guy now, and it's just a matter of getting everybody healthy and getting them the work they need and just see how that all starts to, to move forward. Your players talked about the importance of rest this week and getting yeah. as much rest as possible. And um, I noticed that the majority of them ride mopeds to class. Yeah. I was wondering if that is something that is preached from the coaching level or if that's just a personal choice by the players. It, it's, uh, we can credit the parking department or the parking ticket folks. And that, I mean, it's not just here. It's every college campus in America, right? Uh, but it's, it's the one way, you know, for players to have cars on campus, that's just nobody can afford that. So I think they've all found that as a way to – to get around, but the the rest part is important, and, and uh, you know I just ask them to be mindful. I mean, we played in two pretty warm games early off. You know, I mean, very warm games that took a lot out of us, and uh, then you know you played the other day. So uh, there's a cumulative effect. If you're not careful during the course of the season, you get you get worn down. And young guys think they're you know invincible and all that, but it's just there's, there's an advantage to be to be gotten or lose if if you're not mindful there. So I think our guys for the most part are pretty good that way. At least they pay attention now. You know, what they do after that, I don't know, but I think they're pretty good about that. Okay, thank you. See you out there. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.